with the whistles. Byron Scott, unenviable task of defensing Drexler. What a pass to Buck Williams. Drexler, who leads Portland in most everything, including assists. Well, A.C. Green got caught watching Clyde Drexler and his man cut back door, and Clyde caught him for the easy two. Deflected away to the Los Angeles Lakers. Well, Clyde, they faked the pick and roll. There was Buck Williams up undercutting as A.C. was watching uh, Clyde Drexler come off the fake pick and roll play. Divots. Rebound Jerome Percy. Terry Porter brings it down for Portland. Stolen by Teagle. Sedale three to Teagle. Rebound Williams. 2-0 Portland. Percy on the run. Ten on the shot clock. Terry Porter, who has been red hot from three-point range in this playoff series. He's now eight for 12. <clears throat> Clyde is right now great offense for his other players. That time he drove to the basket. The defense, he sucked him in and kicked it out for the three-point for Terry Porter. Divots misses again. So Vladi Divots is the man that Portland's allowing to shoot, and he's pulled off the top of the game. It's Porter to make it seven to nothing. I think Coach Dunleavy better get a, a timeout here quickly because... Uh, if Portland goes on a, a, a couple more points run, they're going to uh, blow them out of here in the first quarter. He wanted them to get off to a quick start. And it's not settled for a 13-point eased-up win. Jumpers from outside, and you can see it's not happening for him. He has to go back down inside and use his quickness on Duckworth. That being bloody deep out. Duckworth on a hold as they continue to try to get the ball to Divac. And Kevin Duckworth, former Eastern Illinois star, has his first foul. Portland 3-for-3 three three from the floor to start the game. The Lakers 0-for-3. Two and a half minutes gone. Lakers looking for their first points. Teagle. Terry Teagle, who is leading the Lakers in the playoffs, averaging 21 a game. Loses it out of bounds. Dick, the last time down, that's what the Lakers won. You want to go into Vladi, they double teamed him. He made the, a quick pass across court and got a good a shot from Terry Teagle. Same thing here happening now. Duckworth using the body to force Devots away from the lane. Teagle over Kersey. Rebound Green, taken away by Porter. Buck Williams, what a play! Exchange at the other end on the previous play. Almost stolen by three. A beautiful touch pass by the Blazers and Teagle there with a block. That's been excellent defense. Two, two plays down. Good defense. Playoff basketball. Percy nails his first jumper. Nine to two Portland. I'm really beginning to, to, to see that this college type atmosphere is really... Uh, favoring the Trailblazers because they love to get up and down. The crowd is into it, and it's favoring them right now. Byron Scott connects on his first attempt. Scott averaging 20 in this playoff series, second to Teagle. Drexler's first shot. Out it comes to Teagle. 9-4, Lakers trail. 7.49 left in the opening quarter as Teagle can't hit the easy runner. Drexler the other way to Duckworth. Knocked away and taken by Divac. Lakers playing some great defense. He got his body right in front of uh, Duckworth on that possession. Vladi did, and uh, he couldn't recover the ball. It went out of his hands. Teagle double teamed, and Kersey takes it away. Drexler puts it in high gear and is fouled by Byron Scott. 
is this game quicker than the, than the <laughs> this game is a quick paced game the, this game is probably the quickest for both teams than the first two here it is double team Kersey steals it from Tigo and you know what Clyde gonna do in the open court Drexler who has had a sensational playoff series makes it 10 to 4 I think it's two, well, it's three explosive players in the open court in today's game. You got Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Clyde Drexler, who can all explode and take it to the basket and either dunk it or lay it in with spectacular uh, moves. Drexler, the 42, was his career playoff high. He almost single-handedly took over the game when the Lakers had enjoyed a rather sizable lead in the forum on Wednesday night. Duckworth, Sedale three, a two-pointer, it's 11 to six, three, first basket. See, you start your offense inside out. They're going inside to Vladi, he's getting a double team, he's kicking it back out for open 15-footers, and Sedale three just knocked down one. But that's because of Vladi Vibot getting double team. Eight on the shot clock, and an offensive foul against Buck Williams of Portland. Timeout, 6.30, remaining in a fast pace. Opening. He's going to, uh, Terry Porter's going to go down double team. Vladi's going to kick it back out to Sedale three for the easy jump shot. There it is. Offense inside out. That's what the Lakers must do today if they're going to win this ball game. Against a team with the winningest record in the West, the Portland Trail Blazers on the regular season. And they start out the Blazers shooting at 57%. The Lakers 3 out of 10. And Buck Williams and company lead by 5 with 6.5 minutes remaining in the opening period. defeated the Pistons, 94-87 New York, will now meet the Chicago Bulls, the NBA defending champions in the next round. Evans with five. With four. They came down with the same play. I think for the last five times, they straight, they've run the same play, get it into Blotty, let him make a decision whether to uh, pass it out or take Duckworth one-on-one. -on -one. By Drexler. Oh, and he gets the ball on the floor. No one seems to be able to deter him. Divots picks up the foul. Here's Vlad again back and Duckworth in. He kind of rolls off of him and goes in for two. Now he's able to do that when Duckworth comes up and bodies him. That's when Vlad rolls off of him and goes to the. This is a good pace for Portland. They really, it's a quick pace, and they feel the atmosphere is really good, and um, they're looking to take advantage of this crowd. Byron Scott just missed the three. His foot was on the line. Four points for Scott, 13 to 10. Drexler can't answer at the other end. Sedale three, who has been perhaps the brightest of all spots for the Los Angeles Lakers in a very difficult season. Yes, uh, Jerry West made a good trade in picking him up because he's been invaluable. Evans out to Scott, a loose pass, three seconds. Uh, two seconds, Scott, he now has a half dozen and the Lakers pull within one. Dick, you don't see Byron do that too much, come off the dribble, take it to the basket and pull up for the jump shot. Usually he likes to spot up and shoot. Lakers putting backcourt pressure on, Duckworth left open, and the big guy hits the seven-footer, his first points. That's where Kevin feels comfortable. He, do, he doesn't really feel comfortable with his back to the basket. He wants to really face the basket and shoot jump shots. And then Terry Porter, on a, a good penetration, kicks it to him for the easy two. Three. Four for Sedale. The shooting, the shooting has picked up. Four and a half minutes remaining in this opening quarter. Kersey with a nice move. Tipped in by Buck Williams. His fourth point. The Lakers can't keep 
trading baskets with the Trailblazers because they're going to lose this battle. They must make a defensive stand here in the next couple minutes. Stolen by Duckworth. And three from behind uh, picks up his first foul. Jerome here takes it, takes an off-balance shot. And there was Buck tipping it in. Now, Buck got that tip in because Vladi had to come in, come over and help Terry Tito. That enables Buck Williams to be up under the basket by himself and tip it in. Kersey and Porter are out for Portland. Cliff Robinson and Danny Ames make their first appearance. Here's Ames. Plenty of playoff experience for the Boston Celtics. Teagle with a rebound. The Lakers down by three on this trip. Scott for three. And it's over the top. That would have tied it. The Lakers have not been in the lead. Portland jumped out to a quick 7-0 advantage. Currently lead 17-14. What a pace. The pace is good. This crowd is into it, too. They're really enjoying the NBA playoff here in, in Las Vegas. Robinson, unable to connect, gets his own rebound. Oh, bodies crashing and Green comes up with it. A Portland native off the three. Wednesday night after the overtime magic, correct me if you disagree, I thought the Laker tank was on empty, totally on E. They were really exhausted. Of course, they, they were definitely tired. Vladi played 47 minutes, so they all played 47 minutes. Drexler had the rebound, the pass, gets another rebound at the other end, fights for the loose ball, keeps it alive. Oh! Basketball at his best. You're getting defense, fast breaks, inside play. Oh boy. I'm going to take my jacket off and get in there in a minute. <laughs> the Blazers by one. This crowd on its feet as Ames hits. Danny Ames into the book. I tell you, the reason this game is like it is, is because of this crowd. I can't. I, I didn't think that this crowd would be like this when the game first began, but they are really into it. Teagle. And that's making the players play even harder and with more intensity. Less than two minutes to go in the opening quarter. Duckworth left alone. Rebound Teagle. Well, Teagle doing a great job on the boards. Two block shots for Teagle, who is leading the Lakers in scoring in the playoffs. Plus four rebounds. Well, Coach Dunleavy told us that uh, he, they weren't getting the job done on the boards with the big lineup, so that's why he went to the small lineup. He didn't have anything to lose. Three. Divac with two. Bad shot. And the 24-second buzzer goes to Portland. Well, apparently, touched first by Portland, and the buzzer came after Portland had possession. And it's out of bounds to the Lakers on the hustle by A.C. Green. And that'll been for first period. Eldon Campbell makes his first appearance for the Lakers. Number 41. Scott. And a foul. It appeared to be Drexler, maybe Ames. Brian Scott is really being aggressive. He's really looking not to take the jump shot. Shadow for Lakers. First foul on Drexler. Under one minute to go, the Lakers operating under a new 24. Campbell. Rebound, Duckworth. Drexler to Duckworth. Seven on the shot clock. Robinson is fouled. And Cliff Robinson to the line for a deuce. But Cliff Robson has really upped his game this past season. He's really improved a lot. Uh, he's, uh, not only has he improved his play, he's got more playing time. And that's why Portland is going to be a tough team to be here out in the West because they have a six-man like Robinson. 
Big fan of the late Marvin Gaye is Cliff. And you see his improvement from last year. More points, more rebounds, more blocks. 6'10", 225 pounder from Connecticut. Gets one out of two, and then Buck Williams almost had it. Green was able to rip it away. You know, Dick, they're going to really have to make a decision about Cliff Robinson and, and Jerome because I think next year they're going to almost have to start uh, Cliff Robinson because he's ready to play 40 minutes a game. Tony Smith in for Sedale, three. Three sitting out with the two fouls in the quarter. Scott, again, aggressively going to the hole. I, I haven't seen Byron attack the basket in a long time like this. And it's really helping the Lakers out. Oh, a mid-air collision as Robinson took it inside and met a barricade of yellow-clad Lakers. And it's Scott with a foul. Byron here is attacking. He's going strong all the way through three guys and taking a strong to the basket. But for the Lakers, Magic, that means Scott and three their starting backcourt, each with two fouls early. And the reason Byron is able to do that is because Clyde is coming up on him, taking away the jump shot, and so forcing Byron to put it on the floor and go to the basket, and Byron is doing just that. Gets two, and it's 22 to 18. 4.7 seconds left. Devox, does he know how much time's left? I guess not. Well, he did get it away in time. Boy, 4.7 is a lot of time. That's the end of the first period. 22-18. Byron Scott with eight points, sparking the underdog Lakers, but it's Portland in the lead by four at the quarter. Lakers. Campbell and Percy takes it away. Porter loses it. Smith breaks out two on one. Smith. His first basket off the break, and the Lakers trail by one. This is the best Laker defensive team they have on the floor. Offensive-wise, they might struggle, but defensive-wise, Tony Smith and Eldon give them very good, two very good defensive players. With the body, Tony Smith against Jerome Kersey. Smith has his first foul. And here's Smith on the break with a timeout. 9.26 left in the half. McDonald's, huh? Yeah. Smells good. Thanks. If this ride were any longer, you'd have to fight for those fries. <laughs> <laughs> we're stuck. The dream of a pure sports car has been kept alive by the people who race them. Those who believe in the simple thrill that only comes from driving a lightweight car with a lot of power. A car that car companies no longer made. But now, the new Mazda, the people who brought back the Roadster, announce the return of the pure sports car. The new RX-7. Mazda, it just feels right. If it makes you nervous to have someone my size in your face, now you know how your kid feels when you're in his. For six years, we've watched his courageous fight for justice. Been my luck for this. He inspired us with his passion, brilliance, and wit. Friday, in a powerful all-new two-hour movie finale, it's all gonna end. The Assassination, Matlock's Final Mystery at 9, 8 Central, NBC Friday. Welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. 
This game today provides a hiatus from the fiery hell of the past week in Los Angeles, and I know it hits you as deeply as many of the citizenry of that city. Well, I think everybody should send their prayers out to those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their homes, and, and just everybody in Los Angeles that they can now work together and rebuild their community. And just everybody has to come together. I know you yourself uh, will take a strong stance in that regard. Some of those burned out blocks. Uh, nope. No question about it, Dick. If it takes me, uh, I'm trying to put a group together to go in there and buy a property to, to get the building process going right away. All so right. I'm going to put my money right into the community and try to just help everybody just come together and, and just work as one. All right, that's the uh, all-time assist leader in the NBA continuing as a citizen. Lakers now facing an eight-point deficit. Cliff Robinson, a tough turnaround, and Cliff Robinson of Portland rebounds. Percy down court. Oh, my! Oh, highlight film time. What a perfectly timed pass by Percy to Drexler flying down the wing. And that's why he's a candidate to be on that Olympic team. Man, oh, man. Campbell. Right there. Again, you can see those rims really kicking the ball out. Ames. And that three-pointer could have really put the Lakers in trouble. They're down by 10, Los Angeles. Great defense by the Blazers. Contesting every pass. Scott. Campbell. Saved by Campbell. I tell you, they up their pressure. But this small team, they really playing good defense. Campbell can't hit. Robinson misses the rebound. And Jerome Percy gets the rebound for Portland and is fouled. Well, you got Jerome and you got Clyde up over everybody. Slam dunk. If, if you could go back again, watch him jump. Oh, man. And Eldon Campbell, all he could do was get out the way. Divots is back in. The last foul was on uh, Cliff Robinson of Los Angeles. Here's Cliff of Portland. Porter has it knocked away by Divots. Blazers lead by 10. Lakers have scored only 23 points, and we have six and a half left before the intermission. Teagle, his fifth point. points is because the inside game. You have to get inside points. That's the reason. Cliff Robinson over Divots. Drexler with a rebound. The all-purpose blazer. Clyde Drexler does it all. Leads all scorers with eight. You, you know, you always got to keep your eye on Clyde because he can run in from any, any point on the floor and get those offensive boards. Divots trying the behind the back. Good defense, hustling with Sadale three to force the turnover by Portland. I tell you, right now, they need to slow this game down. The Lakers need to just slow it down, set up a play, and get something good out of it, out of their half-court offense, because they're struggling right now. Put a little ice on that transition game of Portland. Yes, slow the game down. Lakers are getting one shot per trip. Three-pointer, three. And another one-shot effort as Drexler hustles the ball up court. Porter for three. And Terry Porter has been incredible from outside. Eight points for him. Dick, that's what happens when you shoot jumpers on Portland and don't make them because it, it makes it hard for you to get back on defense, it makes it easier for uh, Portland as a team to run out on you. Teagle with a wide-open jumper is way short. Drexler... And a foul. Divac with his second. And Portland threatening to run away here in the first half. Well, when you shoot jumpers on the Lakers, this is what happens. Terry Porter hits the three-pointer. 
pass from Clyde Drexler. Clyde, same thing, off the jumper, missed by the Lakers. He splits the defense, takes it all the way to the basket, foul, fouled by Vladi. Drexler, four for four from the line, now five in a row. And looks for his 10th point of the game and to give Portland suddenly a 15-point lead. But the Lakers with no inside game. Portland is just dominating on the defensive boards and running out on them for layups or jump shots. Or they're going to the foul line. A 16-2 run for the Blazers. Scott, they're going to count it on the continuation. Ten for Byron. Byron Scott is a man on a mission. He said, okay, you know I can shoot jump shots. I'm going to show you that I can take it to the basket. He comes around a pick and roll play by Blotty. He goes strong to the basket. Two points. The reason Byron was able to do that was because he hung Cliff Robinson up on the pick, and he came around clear. Nobody came over for Portland to cut him off from going all the way to the basket. Again, no roll off that rim. Scott with 10 to lead the Lakers, but it's Portland. A sizable 13-point advantage. Drexler to Ames. Cliff Robinson. Knocked away, saved by A.C. Green. Nope, out of bounds to whom? Portland. Dick, this is a hard matchup for the Lakers. Now, who is Vladi going to guard out there on the court? Is he going to be on Cliff Robinson or Kersey? And either one can uh, have the speed advantage over Vladi. Seven on the shot clock. Aims for three. Clyde Drexler set that up. He posted Byron Scott. The double team came down. He kicked it back out to a wide open Ames. So the Blazers, one of the busiest three-point shooting teams in the NBA, have four in the first half. Two by Porter, two by Ames. Teagle can't hit. Divox follows it in. Four for the big center of the Lakers. A.C. Green with a defense. Drexler wanted a foul. What a move by Scott. And a foul on Ames. Again, instead of pulling up for the jumper, he's going to the basket. He's trying to create some offense. I think he feels that the, uh, the Lakers are struggling, and he's a veteran, and he knows that he has to take over the game. Here comes Byron down. Oh, he made a uh, crazy trip over his own man, takes it to the hole, and Danny Ames has to bump him and grab him and fouls him. No shot as the... Blazers have only three team fouls in the quarter. The Lakers with four. It's important for the Lakers to try to get this game within 10 points at halftime. If it's over 10, it's going to be difficult for them to come back. But if they got it 10 or under, it's, it's, it's still they're in range to have a chance to win the game after halftime. Boy, Lakers want a foul. Didn't leave. They can't believe it. Porter at the other end as a lot of slapping, but this is playoff basketball. And you better have strong hands. Only the strong survive in playoff basketball. And that time, Vladi was not strong. Don Levy still working the officials at midcourt. This, this defense is all over the Lakers. They swarming them. Well, there they call on. Could be Ainge or it could be Kersey. They were both bumping d -bots. Percy gets the foul. Vladi comes to the middle. Hands by Buck Williams. Danny picks it up to Porter. Now the swarming defense calls that turnover. Portland calls timeout. 3-0-4 left in the half. And the Lakers on their knees down by 16. On the board and playing good team defense. Well, they've really made it tough on three to who's hurt them in the past. Scott... And another rebound, Duckworth. You, you got to go inside. I, I just, you can't say it enough that you got to start that inside, that offense inside, and then try to kick it out for wide open jumpers. The Lakers were w within one at 
Over the top is Terry Porter, who finally misses a three-point shot. You know, Drexler has 10, Ainge has 10, and Porter has 10. So 30 for those three, one more than the total Laker team. Or 30 for the backcourt. That's all backcourt players. Three, he has trouble. And Duckworth ties him up. And that'll be a mismatch on the upcoming jump. Hey, you haven't seen that too much. Duckworth on the floor. Something as good is happening for Portland. They're really into this game. He tries to split the defense. Duckworth goes, look at, look at the big man. Say, get out my way, little man. I want that ball. Playoff basketball. Duckworth controls the tap. 2.24 left in the half. Drexler, rebound green. Look at him run Williams out on Scott. Sedell three. Won't fall. A.C. Green gets an offensive rebound, and he's fouled. Well, one man you always have to pay attention to on the Lakers side. Clyde Drexler you always have to pay attention to on the Portland side. The man on the Lakers side is A.C. Green. He is battling Buck Williams here. He goes back up after getting the offensive board, and is fouled. A.C. Green has not scored in this game. Of course, part of that you do to the great defense of Portland, and Duckworth takes it away, and we're going to get a jump ball. That was a quick whistle in favor of the Lakers. Hey, he's not scoring points today, and meaning uh, Duckworth, but he's being aggressive on defense, and he's get, being aggressive on loose balls as well. The turnaround in Duckworth season came on the 1st of April when they met at Terry Porter's home with Adelman, Drexler, Williams, Porter, Duckworth, where the Trailblazers confirmed that they needed Duck to play hard down the stretch if they were going to entertain any big playoff hopes, and Duckworth has been tough ever since. Well, he's one for five today. That, that doesn't mean anything. He's involved. Last two times he's been in two jump balls. He's won both jump balls. He's been boxing out. He's playing. He's pushing Vladi out of his low post position, making it hard for Vladi to then score on him. So he's doing it on both ends of the court. He's just not scoring, but he's setting up people on offense for their shots. I like his game today. Two points. They're the most dangerous team in basketball off turnovers. Nobody get five men down the court faster than the Portland Trailblazers or turn points off of turnovers quicker than the Portland Trailblazers. The Lakers, since the 926 mark, have scored only eight points. Trailblazers, 25 points. Less than a minute to go. First half. And this is how the games up in Portland were played as the Blazers won handily. Inside the green. Even then, he has to force a very tough chance that rolls in. The Lakers are getting no easy points. They're working hard for every point that they're getting today. And credit that with Portland's defense. And Portland's moving that ball around offensive-wise, too, really well. Drexler for three, knocked back out. And last touch by the Blazers, Buck Williams. Well, actually, last touch by Adelman. <laughs> he was out of bounds. Well, he's standing up. He can sit down because I think he's getting what he wants today. They are playing hard, intense basketball. Shot clock off, 19 seconds to go. Update the Chuck Daly story. The Pistons are out of the playoffs. Stay with us at halftime. Tony Smith against Ainge. And another shot doesn't fall. Terry Porter, desperation! And that's the end of a very big first half of the Portland Trailblazers. Danny Ainge leading the Blazers. Game four here. Uh, even the Lakers guard has been providing offense, but it's, they've been struggling to do so. Under Kersey the to Drexler. Unselfish pass by Kersey, who had a pretty good 15-footer himself. 
So a statement made by Portland on their first possession. There's Duckworth batting away Green's pass. Williams on Green. AC. Good block out by Kersey. You know when the ball hits the ground, everybody's boxing out. Same starting fives for both teams. Porter, a two. And look at Kersey, just finds his way in between three and Teagle and had the position in the rebound. Here, Jerome could have tucked the shot here, but he passed it up for a cutting. Terry, well, no, I'm, excuse me, that's Clyde Drexler back door for the dunk shot. I tell you, uh, Portland, I haven't seen them play like this in a while. Just really moving the bodies, moving the ball, playing good defense. Duckworth from Drexler, and it's a 20-point lead for Portland. Again, if Portland successful, they open against Phoenix best of seven Tuesday night at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland, Oregon. Siegel continues call. Duckworth hauls it down. Here come the Blazers. Porter. Right back to Kersey. Blocked by Devots. Sedell three. Only his eighth point. Even on that plate, Dick, you had three trailblazers hustling to get back and make it a tough layup for Sedell 3. So even when Sedell has a, 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 a clear back, a clear path to the basket, there was Buck Williams and Clyde Drexler trying to contest the layup. Drexler will try a tray. And it goes out of bounds and the cry air ball from this uh, Las Vegas. A lot of Rebel fans here. And it is a college... Uh, atmosphere that uh, I like it I'm enjoying it I think they are too even though the game isn't competitive at this point Scott and another turnover and a blocking foul the whistle would not have been uh, offered until the turnover resulted they're gonna let him play but there was some action and Kersey gets the foul well, a second firing catching him a little uh, Kersey slides over. It's a little body. Uh, good call. Good call. Ed Rush is one of the best officials. Scott misses everything. There goes Kersey. And Byron Scott forced to commit his fourth foul. The same thing that's been happening all day. You shoot a jumper. They run out on you. And Kersey, here, here it is. Kersey with the pass from Clyde. Byron has to grab him. He still gets two points. Then better off uh, saving the foul because he's going to get two shots anyway. Yeah. Plus, that's, what, three fouls for Byron Scott? Four. Four fouls, excuse me. And, and right now, Dick, he's playing the best of the Lakers. Now you, you take Byron out, it's going to be tough for the Lakers right here. Eldon Campbell comes in. The Blazers were shooting only 66% in the first three games from the line. But today, that's only their second miss. They're 12 for 14. Oh, they got their whole game working today. They really do. They're inspired. They're hustling. Oh, boy. Green charging to the hole and gets a tough two. Drexler at the other end. Whoa, what a collision. And look, and on the floor, he still took it away, and Campbell finally recovers. Oh, no whistle on <laughs> no, that collision. No. Well, they grabbed the ball before they uh, hit him with the body, so it's no call. Eldon Campbell has four points, and the Lakers are within 15. As little as this has been for Los Angeles, it, re it represents a run the way it's been going for them. Duckworth can't hit. Green rips down the rebound. His body's... Campbell is hurt. 
at the other end. His body's all over the court, all on the floor. Lakers call time, and A.C. Green goes back to uh, check on his fallen big man. He might have been hit by his own teammate, uh, A.C. Green. Let's, uh, there's Campbell, 41 underneath. And as Green goes up, looks like his knee, Green's knee, hits uh, Campbell in the groin. Oh, he kicked him. He kicked him, right? In the groin. Bad spot. <laughs> Uncomfortable spot. Back-to-back -back NBA playoff doubleheader next weekend on NBC. An Indy engine today cost in excess of $100,000, so it is a major. The Lakers on a modest 6-1 run. Teagle, again short. He has been icy. All alone, Duckworth at the other end, and three knocks it away, but he fouled Duckworth number three for Sedale. I like Coach Adamant's strategy here. When the Lakers take a jump shot, whatever man is on that particular guy runs out, they get the rebound, throw it long. Here it is, Terry Teagle takes a jump shot, Duckworth runs at him, goes down the court after he misses, releases for the layup, and Sedell fouls him. Good spread. They've been doing that about three or four times here this afternoon. Duckworth, a 69% free throw shooter, misses the first. Looking for his fifth point. Those numbers reflect his up and down season. Yes. But today, he's playing solid basketball. Sometimes the numbers don't reflect your game, Dick. Sometimes the numbers are deceiving. And today, his numbers are deceiving because he's all over the court and doing an excellent job defensively and passing the basketball on the offensive end. Campbell tries to wheel inside where Kersey fouls him, and for Jerome, that's his third. Kersey, one of the many trailblazers from the small college level of basketball that really developed into stars. See him committing the foul. But more and more NBA teams, are, I think, following their lead in terms of the Portland trailblazers and getting lead from small colleges. Southeast Oklahoma State for Rodman. Well, Campbell. Makes it 55-40. And what that does, it says a lot for the scouting of Portland. The Lakers trying for the turnover, but one too many hands in the pie and the foul on Teagle, and that will be his second. Already the fourth team foul on the Lakers, so the Blazers with 7.37 to go, one foul away from the penalty. Portland has committed two fouls. Oh, a lot of Strategal and... Uh, Clyde really battling inside. Open is Duckworth. Cannot give him that shot. All day long, Portland has been penetrating, kicking it back out to the wide open man for easy jump shots. AC Green from outside. Percy rebounds. Look at Drexler. Oh, man. That ball was laying out there for like three seconds. All of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes Clyde, gets it, and takes it to the basket. Is he an athlete or what? I think you're going to be his agent. <laughs> <laughs> here he comes here. The ball is just bouncing. Look, oh, here comes Clyde. Out of nowhere, Terry Tico thought he had it. He just dashed in front of him and took it to the basket. He is something. He's something. That's his first miss today, a dozen points. He said the knee feels much better. The extra days for him really paid off. Yes, it, 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 it has really helped him to uh, uh, probably take the pain. And, and uh, he said it's about, what, 80% he's practicing that. And uh, every day off for him is a, a blessing in disguise. Lakers trailing by 18, and Campbell trying to go inside, and out of bounds to Portland. Every offensive move by the Lakers seems so totally contested. Nothing easy, as you pointed out. From, from the start of this game, Foul Green gets Buck Williams. 
Adam and Coach Eagle on the other side. If you coach Adam, you got to love Ty Flair. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Drexler setting up Porter. Green, good rebound away from Buck Williams. Teagle is due. And it's stripped away again. Portland has done that continually. Ahead to Kersey. Can't save. Green. AC now with eight. Well, that might have been the first relief basket that the Lakers have gotten in this second half and probably most of this game. And the crowd into it, encouraging the Laker defense. Brown got a piece of it from the backside. One second, Drexler! No, the buzzer sounded. And Clyde, blindly throwing it up there, almost made the shot. But the defense forces the turnover. But Dick, uh, the crowd has gotten into it. Now the Lakers must respond and keep the crowd into it. Look at this. That looks like a Magic Johnson at Orlando shot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Thanks for reminding me about that. Yeah, we all had a <laughs> reminder yesterday. Yes, it's fun to see it again. Oh, Green had a 15-footer. Misses the 10. Duckworth rebounds. That was a bad decision by AC. Should have took the first shot. Porter all the way. Rebound Green, who had led the Lakers again this year. Three over Duckworth. And the Lakers are within 14. Ten points for three. Adelman doesn't want to take any chances. The crowd is in this game. Problem. Also, you're talking about playoff experience. You're talking about rebounding assists and leaders. And you miss all those points, too, at the same time as a storm. Buck Williams sets a new 24. Lakers down by as much as 20 here in this period. Drexler draws the foul. They have pulled uh, within 14, chips six off that big lead. And probably what you're missing most out of that graphic is you're missing enthusiasm. You're missing somebody to jack everybody else up. Somebody who provides the needs of other players. And, and that's what they're really missing. Even when they had James and, and uh, Sam healthy, they still miss that. And that's the, the ingredients that, again, you don't measure in the same points. Eight rebounds, five assists for the glide. on three. Haynes knows how to use his body, but he gets the... Didn't he make... One of the magazines picked him on the all-whiner team, and I, I noticed you're, you made the top five, too. I, I, I'm on that team as well. Green. Hustling, and the jump ball is called. No. Ten seconds is the call. And A.C. Green and the Lakers defense. Get this crowd going. Hey, the Lakers said, you've been talking about Portland's defense. We have some defense of our own here. AC knocks it away. He's scrambling, hustling. And the shot in terms of the 10-second uh, clock ran out on him. Good defense by AC and the Lakers. Now they must try to keep this crowd in it by scoring a basket here. Chucky Brown from outside. Can't hit. No matter who Dunleavy inserts on that front line, he just can't seem to get any scoring. Ames for three. And Danny Ames quickly has his 15th point. Three trays for Ames. Three at the other end. Ames with the rebound. court foul against the Lakers and uh, Portland now won in the penalty. Let, let's take a look at the here come Ains now watch 
what Elgin Campbell does. He goes away from a three-point shooter. You can't do that. He should have just took the man. Instead, he goes away and aims his three-pointer. Oh, poor defense by the Lakers and Elgin Campbell. He should have stayed with Danny Ainge. That counter on in the stretch. He's not going to hurt you. He's only going to help you. Now you talk about intensity. Has he ever played when he wasn't intense? No. <laughs> That's his trademark. That's why he's in this league. Lakers now have pulled within 14. Now trail by 19. Time running out in the third. 2.45 left. Two seconds on the shot clock. Brown not there. Brown gets his own rebound and scores. Wow, good follow by Chucky Brown of, of his own missed shot and went and got it and uh, put it back. Mismatch in there. Drexler against three. Oh, Cliff Robinson. Poor Laker defense that time. Vladi should have came over and took Robinson. Instead, he didn't. And Robinson walked in for an easy layup. Devon's inside the green. He's stripped. Tony Smith can't hit the bank. Ames comes out of the pack with it. Boy, did you think keep saying the same thing. They are making it tough on the Lakers. Buck Williams unable to save. It goes to the Lakers. Rick Adelman done a great job in Portland. This 45-year-old headmaster who grew up in Southern California, very near the sports arena. And he graduated from Loyola, California, and that's where the Lakers uh, train do a lot of their practice sessions uh, during the course of the season. Exactly. I, I, in my opinion, I, I think he's done his best job, and especially in this playoff series. He's really prepared them and had them mainly ready. That isn't exactly Chucky Brown's strength. That 20-footer, but he nails it, 68-51. Well, he said, hey, I'm on national TV. I want to show everybody I can play. Minute and a half to go. Drexler loses the handle. Divac hustles. And Vladi Divac, who missed some 44 games this year with back surgery, throwing his body into the fray, and a foul is called on Divac. Check on that. But right now, you're having a, a lot of uh, talking going on because elbows have been flying right there. Tony uh, knocked this game made and his 16th point. Lays us back up to a 19-point lead. They led early 7-0. The Lakers pulled within one on several occasions in the first half. The last time they were really close, 24-23 with nine and a half left but in the half. Blocking foul right then on uh, Danny Ainge. His third. He Cadell up. right here goes around Clyde. He tried to come over, but he's moving back. He didn't stay in there to take the, 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 the contact, and that therefore he's called for the block and foul. Basically in the NBA, once you get in there underneath that basket, they're not going to give the defensive player the charge very often, are they? No, not up under the hoop. That's why a lot of college guys who come out of uh, college and into the pros have trouble with that because they think that they can still uh, get that call as he has been all year. This is two. Rebound Green. He leads the Lakers in rebounds again today with ten. Four seconds remaining in the third. Divac, did he push off? He and Robinson with some bumping before the shot. It's on Cliff Robinson, his second. Well, the Lakers should go back down into Vladi with Cliff Robinson on him. Uh, Cliff cannot handle him in the post. He gives away a lot of inches to Vladi, and the, the Lakers should try to exploit one. Just rumors right now. Drexler weaving his way in, followed oh. by Percy. What a tip. AC had his hands on it. Jerome went up, took it from him, and tipped it in at the same time. Eight seconds between the game and shot clock as the time winds down here in the third. That was Drexler deflecting. Here comes Porter, three on one to Drexler. He earned it. to lead all scores for the all-pro Drexler. Your second.
is A.C. Green. Final shot for the Blazers. It'll be taken by Robinson. Off the backboard. Oh, my. Everything's going right for the Portland Trail Blazers. Robinson at the front of three point and banks it in. And he said, I called it. <laughs> Here it is. Roddy's running out at him. He lets it go. It was just far enough off to bank him. Oh, yes. He said, I called that. <laughs> Kiss off the glass. An exclamation point in the third period. And Drexler, who had made a great play deflecting at the other end, beating the Lakers down court. Mr. Glide. Not Clyde, the Glide. Mr. Glide. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Smith outside. Byron Scott starts the 24 again. 15,478 in 48 hours. What a job the NBA in Las Vegas did to put this together. I, I think that uh, we should really thank the community of Las Vegas for coming out and supporting the NBA and uh, also coming in and, and then cheering and uh, getting into the game. Excellent. How he's going to do in the NBA. It's a different game. You're not dealing with 18-year-olds. Now you're dealing with men. And uh, let's see how, he, how it goes for him. I wish him the best, though, because he's a good man. Terry Porter. And Devox clears for the Lakers. Well, Dick, I'm trying to sit here and find some words to tell the fans uh, just how the Lakers can get back in this game, but I, I can't come up with any. See, that's part of this business. <laughs> These are the tough ones. You know, it's easy to do the overtime games. Right. Those one point thrillers down to the wire. It's when the one team's down by 20, you're trying to figure out a way to make a game close and still maintain your own. So easy to vote for the coach of the team that wins the playoffs, and he, often uh, that isn't his best year of coaching. It may be something when they, the development of the team or a year such as this one for Lakers and Celtics when you've had to overcome so many injuries. Mm -hmm. So we probably both know that Phil Jackson will probably get it, and uh, he would deservedly so earn it, and uh, it would be no problem if, if he got the award. But uh, on adversity and the things that both Chris Ford and, uh, and Coach Dunley they had to go through, as well as Coach Riley rebuilding the Knicks, uh, they've all done an outstanding job. Well, Riles got himself a little award today. He's in the next round against the Bulls, 94-87. The Knicks beat the Pistons in decisive game five at the Garden in New York. Devots powering inside and no luck. No good position by Cliff Robinson. He did move. Roddy created contact. There was no foul. Cliff Robinson, and he is fouled. Now, a point now with 10 minutes to go, Magic, and you've got Clyde Drexler nursing a sore knee. When, uh, if you're Rick Adelman, do you give uh, Drexler a blow here and uh, let him rest that knee the rest of his surgery? His chances of uh, making the Olympic team will go right out the door. Campbell blocked by Williams and Drexler, and Williams comes down on the baseline. And with that, we'll take In Las Lakers. Vegas, the Lakers and the Jazz, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sets an NBA record as he passes Wilt Chamberlain, becoming the NBA's all-time leading scorer. Kareem finished his career with over three. Out. And I knew they were setting up a play for me. And I was out the game, and they were setting up the play, and I asked Coach Riley, could I go in? Because I wanted to be the man who delivered the ball to Kareem. And Coach Riley let me go back in, so uh, I got that in my memory bank. Right at home, up on the shelf. <laughs> wow! Drexler still in the game and leads all scores with 21. He's had a big four-game series. But they're just attacking the Laker basket right now. Meanwhile, Byron Scott, who missed at the other end in the previous play, after scoring eight points in the first quarter and ten in the first half, has not scored in the second half. Well, most of his time been on the bench. And... Uh, you know, it's kind of tough to come back in when you've been sitting so long to come back in and have that same intensity and have that same momentum that you had before you left the game. Chucky Brown. Cliff Robinson denied him. Boy, I tell you, you just, you just, today, they are denying the Lakers any inside game. 
If you think you got a layup, here come two guys to contest you. Buck Williams, that's why he led the league in field goal percentage. He camps out, waits for his turn. Patiently, he's got nine today. Well, Clyde Drexler set up the all that offense there. He penetrated. Somebody had to come over and help. He kicked it to uh, Robinson. He bounced it underneath to uh, Buck Williams. Here they come again. Two on one. Kicked it. Foul! Rip City! Is that what they say up in Portland? It's Rip City here in Las Vegas, too. The biggest lead of the game for the Trailblazers, and that break key by Clyde Drexler. What a magnificent game by the Portland Trailblazers. And their great star drops in. He just slams it. Clyde is an all-around basketball player. 21 points, 7 of 6, 9 rebounds. Close to a triple-double. You are the king of that. Oh, thank you. It shows you how tough it is. Even as great a game as he has, he still needs three more assists and a rebound to be in double figures in all three categories. It's just an exercise now on how badly will... Portland beat the Lakers. Lakers now trying to avoid setting a record for ineptness. Robinson out to three. Lakers' least offensive effort that was 20 years ago when they scored only 72 points against Milwaukee. That was their 60th point today. Yeah. And that was their, their easiest basket today. They just finally got a fast break for a layup by Terry Teagle. Clyde shoots and follows. That's another rebound. Yes. He's, he's got 10. 23 for Drexler to lead all scorers. Now, Dick, I know the fans are wondering, okay, why are all the starters in the game except for two guys? Why is Clyde? Why is Buck? Why is Terry Porter still in the game for Portland? The reason being, they had so many days off. I know Coach Adelman wants to get that rust out of their system and get them ready for Tuesday. Good move by Byron to take it all away. But he wants to play these guys to get them ready. Just like Boston had so many days off, that might affect uh, Phoenix the same way, playing uh, uh, Portland on Tuesday. Uh, Six days off for the Suns. Yes. And so... Uh, you see what happened, they were a little rusty, the Celtics were, and Cleveland took advantage of that. And the same, true, the same thing might hold true for Phoenix coming on Tuesday. Well here, Buck, Buck, everybody in the league knows that Buck Williams wanted to go right. He had so many different shots, Dick, I tell you. Here it is. He cuts back door. Tony relaxes. He comes in. Two guys jump. He says, okay, I'm going to fake it like I'm going to finger roll it. Then I'm going to come to the side, spin it off the glass in two. When I wish I could do that, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't stay in the air long at all. Oh, man, what you talking about? I can barely get up in the air. Not a long hang in the air. <laughs> Nails the long-range bomb for his 17th point. He leads Los Angeles. But I always, I, I'm gonna have to admit, on national TV, that has always been my dream to just one day if I could just take off and, and wonder what Clyde and and uh, Michael. Michael Jordan felt, or what it feels like rather, uh, just walking in air. Air time. Yes. Porter. Ooh. Rick Adelman continues to go with some of his stars, Terry Porter and Clyde Drexler. Well, the game continues to be physical. Here comes Porter, attacks the basket. AC comes over to help out, and he hits him on the head. And one thing about Terry, he's a strong guard, and he still took the blow and, and uh, made the basket. Terry Porter completes the three-point play. 13 points for Porter from Wisconsin. Stevens Point. Well, what do you think about this, uh, the Phoenix-Portland series coming up? You know, you took the words right out of my mouth. Uh -oh. Why don't you analyze okay, that? Okay, well, it, I, I'm wondering, I'm hearing that Marley is, is hurt. Uh, Tom Chambers is, is, is back, but I think he's still hurt. And I think that's going to be uh, 
Let's, I'm going to hold you a minute. Okay. Drexler goes off, and typical of Drexler, he kind of sneaks off. He doesn't beg for applause, but the fans who notice give him a hand, even the Laker fans. If Phoenix is not healthy, Portland will win that series. But one thing about this, that series is that it's going to be very, very entertaining. Up and down basketball, both teams like to get out in the open court. Both teams have uh, excellent players uh, in terms of shooting. Uh, you got two point guards that are all stars in terms of Porter and Kevin Johnson. I love Warnersek. I think he's one of the most underrated players. Phoenix. There it is. Phoenix sweeping the Spurs. Portland about to take out the Lakers in four. Utah. And how about the, the Seattle Supersonics? Although Utah will play the Clippers later today. Clippers and Utah at uh, Anaheim Stadium. Or Anaheim Convention Center near Anaheim Stadium. I'm a big man next year. You might be seeing them in the final. They need somebody that can score points inside. Four and a half minutes to go as Adelman now starting to clear his bench. Tony Smith inside. Campbell can't cut it. Out of bounds to Portland. So the setup in the next round, Adelman and the Blazers Tuesday night and Thursday night at the Memorial Coliseum in Portland. And we undoubtedly on NBC, Magic and I will go. We'll see them next weekend in Phoenix. But I'll tell you what, don't miss that series. The next series is going to be one fast-paced series. Robinson draws the foul from Campbell. Well, if you're just joining us earlier today, the Knicks beat the Pistons 94-87 in a very physical game. And Pat Riley's Knicks move on to the next round against the Bulls. This game started with the Blazers scoring the first seven points. The Lakers pulled back and were within one at 24-23 with nine and a half minutes left in the half. And then Portland outscored L.A. 25-10. There was a 16-2 run, and it's uh, been nothing but Blazer mania since. Yes, just uh, outstanding team defense. They rebounded the ball. They have shot the ball well. It, it, when you're in a, um, a dressing room and you draw, draw up a game plan, he drew this one up and the team followed it. I mean, to the T, to the letter of T. They followed his game plan all the way. Enos Watley gets the rebounds. Yes, Enos. I'm sorry. That's all right. I just wanted to introduce Ala Abdul Nabi's in there. This is Robert Pack, the rookie from Southern California. Talk about a long shot to make the NBA. Pack. Tony Smith the other way for the Lakers, and he can't find Byron Scott. Go ahead with your thought, Magic. No, I just, you know, Coach Adelman just has to be just a happy coach today. Well, show it, Rick. Come on, smile for us. Well, maybe later. Time out, 3.31 to go. And Portland resting the starters, led by Clyde Drexler with 26. Ainge had 17 off the bench. Porter with 15. Robinson, 13. They're all through for the day. Well, one thing about it is that there are some bright spots for the Lakers. I think Elder Campbell, is, since he's now rededicated himself, he's really going to be a, a very good basketball player. Uh, he'll probably have a great year next year. So we have, have him to look forward to. Sedell three. You know, they're going to really, uh, Vladi will be back full season. You get James Worthy and, and uh, Perkins, back. Perkins back. So they have a lot of things to build on. So they can't hang their heads on this. Oh, it's the 70th point is Campbell. Two-hand slam has 10. Abdul Nabi had his first points. On the Portland trip. Elden must have heard me talk about him. He just wanted to say, that's right, Urban. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to have a great season next year. <laughs> Two and a half to go. A.C. Green and double figures again in rebounds. Had a dozen today. Scott, the top Laker three-point shooter, hits the first tray of the game for Los Angeles. 15 for Scott. Well, Byron started off red hot, and foul trouble just hurt him and hurt the Lakers this whole game with him being on the bench. 
Reminder, NBC tonight, world premiere double feature. First, Delta Burt stars in Deo, a whimsical world premiere movie from Disney, and then a sizzling thriller, Trial, The Price of Passion. Great lineup of stars, Peter Strauss, Beverly D'Angelo, Jill Clayburgh, and Ned Beatty. Trial, The Price of Passion. It's a double bill tonight, so get some popcorn out. And That's so, uh, terrifically. Ains back in and throws a left-handed hit. Hook home for 19. Well, Dick, you can almost tell the relationship between NBC and uh, the NBA for them to really uh, get this game here and get everything working and uh, make both teams happy and and the crowd responded. So uh, you can see when, when people come together and want to make something happen, they can make it happen. So my hat goes off to the NBC and NBA for just coming together and making this a, a special event here in Las Vegas. Well, let's mention some of those people. The executive producer, NBC oh, Career. And uh, he's probably going to wonder what he's going to do with all this extra time. Uh, like I used to wonder when we got out uh, of the playoff early in terms of not going to the final. Tough to watch that first game after you're eliminated? Oh, yeah, very tough. Matter of fact, you don't want to watch no basketball for a week or two because it just hurts. Minute eight seconds left, and some of this crowd of over 15,000 at the Thomas and Mack Center heading home, and they surely brought some terrific and so much false information there yesterday, but uh, we corrected them, Dick. That's right. Yes, you are headed to Spain. That's right. And can't wait. Abdelnabi gets a kind bounce. He has four points. Former Duke star. Boy, back to back. He must be feeling good in terms of what. The Duke Blue Devils did. did yeah, Krzyzewski didn't get rid of him soon enough. You know, he, they got him to the finals with Alvin Lobby as soon as he left to get two titles. Yes. <laughs> we kidded him about it. He's a great good-natured guy. 33 seconds to go, and uh, foul on home. Chucky Brown over the back. Well, I, I want to tell everybody, get ready. Because this next series is going to be something. I, I'm looking forward to that. We're going to have a lot to say, a lot of action to see. A.C. Green gets the foul. He really is the heart and soul of the Lakers. I mean, you talk about a man who plays hard every minute and gets the rebounds and unselfish and a team guy. There, You're looking at one. And the one guy who can provide on the call and, and um, said a prayer for me, and he's a special person. You don't, you don't find too many A.C. Greens in this world. A.C. Unable to connect. He'll be rooting for Portland the rest of the way. He's a native of that great city. and I'm sure he'll be up there for a few of the Portland playoff games. Shot clock is off. Game one. What a move inside. That's ridiculous. That's so good. That's ridiculous. <laughs> 30 points. Chicago knows what they get to see every night. This, this guy's phenomenal. Look at Ewing and Cartwright down there. No whistle. <laughs> Ron Garrison said play on. Ewing brings it. Knicks by one. Two minutes to go in this game. And the Bulls have a foul to give. This is big time. Two big time superstars playing right now. They're hitting all the big shots. Hit his last five shots, 10 to shoot. See, the tough time is you got to play Michael Jordan without fouling him. If you do, there's two, there's where Paxson's going to fill him there. Right there. Into there, rebound Mason. The Knicks by one with a minute 36 to go. This Chicago Stadium crowd on the edge of their seat. Better get the ball across. He's only got a second. Whoa. Back went across and back as Middleton turns it over to the ball. 14 seconds on the shot clock. It was a 10-second count. Bob, you've got to get you, ball, and everything in possession. He did not get it across. He had himself and not the ball. That's what, absolutely. That's what's being explained to him right now. Jackson was across the line, dribbling the ball in the backcourt. It belongs to Chicago. John starts fifth foul. Minute 13 to go in the game. Knicks lead it by one. It was a huge turnover from the Bulls. 
forced the violation. Jordan just sent. Now this is the big one right here. That gives them a that gives them no worse than a tie on a three-point shot. This one really puts the pressure on Chicago. Viewing three out of four tonight. Four out of five. It is a four-point Knicks lead with 13.4 seconds remaining in this game. If only your tires could talk. It's so tiring. He babies the car, then abuses me with messy vinyl cleaner. Hey, I'm rubber. Mm, no touch tire care. Ooh, nice foam. No touch tire care. The first product to clean, shine, and protect tires in one easy step. No scrubbing, no dirty rags, no mess. Yeah, clean and shiny. Oh, no, bad doggy. Go away. Treat your tires right with no touch tire care. Now for a little lesson in style. Very nice. Very easy. Very cool. Drinking alcohol at your prom and graduation parties. Very stupid. High school students with real style know how to leave alcohol out. the play that uh, Ewing actually took the lead. And here's what I'm a little surprised about. Michael Jordan is right here in this position right here. And normally, this is such a great trapping area, all right? As Starks goes away, I'm surprised Michael didn't trap this, but he doesn't. He starts to, and he leaves. And now this gives Ewing the lane. Boom, and, and Pippen right here can't get there soon enough, so the big fella squeezes through there and gets to score. Chicago has chosen not to double Patrick Ewing here in the fourth quarter, and he's made the pay for it at this point in time. He's hit, what, 16 of their, or 14 of the last 16 points? 14 of the last 18, but the point is the same. Pippen will inbound right in front of our bench here with 13-4 to go, Knicks by four. Now, Pippen is the guy who usually comes and gets us. They throw it into Grant, they throw it back to Pippen, and he makes a big looping turn and takes it to the basket. Short keeps the air ball. Pippen got it. Knowing Jordan, it may have been a pass. Got to get the ball inbounds. Foul on Chicago, 4.1 seconds. It's a two-point game. Of course, Grant commits the foul. Jackson will go to the line. It's the same position Mark Jackson was in in game three in overtime against Detroit. They were up one at the time. He steps up there and makes two to put them up three. They now are up two. If he can get two free throws here right now, he's got a chance to ice this game for the New York Knicks. Jackson three for four from the line. Big free throw. Three-point Knicks lead. This one is the big one. Yeah, because what it does, it takes the pressure off of you. Even if a guy shoots a three, you don't have to worry about taking a foul. So this is the, the money ball right here. Ewing gets the offensive board. He is fouled with 1.1, and the Knicks have the three-point lead. Chicago. Well, Chicago did not check off on the rebound. Ewing went over the top and tipped it to himself. 16th rebound of this game. He has 30 points to go with his six blocks, five assists, and now steps to the line. Well, he needs to make one before this game is over. This game is not over yet. It is now. It is now. So Ewing has correction, 33 points. Coming up right after this one, Ron Thule and Goose Gibbons will have the Suns at the Blazers from Portland. Bob, let me say something I, about this game tonight. you got to give New York all kinds of credit. We talked about it being the steal game, the game you come in off the motion. Let me tell you something about Chicago. Chicago had breezed through this season, 67 and 15, really no adversity, really no injuries. They beat Miami 3-0. They've had seven days off. All they've read about the last week is they're going to beat New York four straight, four straight. This sends a wake-up call that for them to repeat, it's going to be harder. People are not going to give them anything. They're going to have to work to earn it. New York is going to make them play tough. The Bulls have been held to only 89 points in this ballgame. Thank you.
In trying to make an artistic statement, one should be careful not to let one's personal aroma do the talking. In order not to offend the critics, I recommend Right Guard Sports Stick. It provides maximum protection and the freshest scents, a sublime palette of odoriferous emanations. After all, a true artiste should be remembered for his inspiration, not his perspiration. Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. Now from Turner Publishing comes the American Golfer's Guide to over 500 of the best courses open to the public in the U.S., Bermuda, and the Caribbean. Imagine teeing off the side of a volcano, navigating a floating green, or 10,000 pines. The American Golfer's Guide, with a forward by U.S. Open champion Curtis Strange, is a must for beginners and scratch golfers alike. Call 1-800-282-1177 and order your copy today. At only $19.95, you will be on par in no time. Well, the Knicks have this one in the bag, 94-89. The last time the Knicks won here at the Madhouse on Madison was March 6, 1987. They won that point, that game, by only one point. Well, let me give you something. That game, though, I was coaching. Juwan Oldham goaltended that last shot. We won that game. The record book is wrong there. They... <laughs> now, that's, now, that's in-depth reporting. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Scratch that off. So it was, it was even prior to that. That's right. I mean, that, that that's a wrong score. Well, the Bulls have to get five quick points here in 1.1 1 .1 seconds. I think you made the uh, right comment. That it's a three-point shot by Armstrong. It doesn't go. The Knicks with a five-point win. 94-89. Knicks over the Bulls. Jordan Hill to four points in the first quarter. The Bulls 38 points in the first half. And we talked at the beginning of the ball game about Patrick Ewing being the man for the New York Knicks. But Doug Collins pointed out that a man who would have to come up big in the matchup tonight would be Xavier McDaniel, the X-Man. He rebounded offensively very well in the series against Detroit and came in here particularly early in the ball game and did an outstanding job of rebounding also an excellent job defensing Scotty Pippen tonight. And the New York Knicks have taken a one-to-nothing lead. First question.